Most of us know that melanin is the pigment that gives skin its color, but it's the melanocytes, the cells in our bodies, that produce melanin. When these cells are damaged or destroyed, it can result in a skin disorder known as vitiligo. Well, in today's video, we are going to be discussing just that. The symptoms and the causes, and of course, what treatment options are available for you right now, including, you know, like whether there are, you know, any brand new treatments on the market right now. And hint, hint, yes, they are. Hi, I'm Yulene Mertens from Beauty by Coach, and I am here to help you find the code behind your skin. So welcome to my channel. Okay, so let's start by talking in general terms here before we get into the specifics. Vitiligo is a condition that causes the skin to lose its natural color and is most noticeable on the face, hands and arms. But it can affect any part of your body, even the eyes, inner ears, uh, what else? Um, the mucous uh, membranes, like the inside the mouth, your nose. Uh, genital and rectal area. Essentially, what's happening is that the immune system is attacking the melanocytes, the cells that produce your pigment. And as a result, the skin loses its color and becomes lighter or white with white uh, patches. These usually mean it's more noticeable in people with darker skin color because, you know, you can see the contrast, right? Like the contrast is more pronounced. Did you get this? Now, there are two main types of vitiligo, generalized and segmental. Generalized vitiligo is the most common type and it affects around 50% of people with the condition. It typically starts at the age of 20 and causes like symmetrical patches of light skin to develop on your body. On the other hand, segmental vitiligo is less common and it affects around 20, 10 to 20 percent of people with vitiligo. And this one offers, often starts around the age of 10 and it affects only one side of your body. The less common types of vitiligo include um, mucosal vitiligo, which affects the, um, you know, the mucus. As I mentioned earlier, this type of vitiligo can be, or is more difficult to treat because the mucous membranes are more sensitive than the skin. Then you have a, like focal vitiligo, which is the least common type of vitiligo that affects only, you know, like one area of your body. Tricom vitiligo is a type of focal vitiligo that affects your hair follicles, causing your hair to tar, turn, you know, like white or gray. And then you have um, universal vitiligo, which affects more than 80% of your body. And this type of vitiligo is very difficult to treat because often requires like more aggressive uh, treatment measures. Okay, the good news is that vitiligo itself is not a painful condition. This is great, like honestly. But um, the lighter patches on the skin are much more susceptible to sunburn, so it's very important for you to wear sunscreen. And sometimes you can wear, you know, like protective clothing and avoid being on the sun when it's, you know, like on the strongest hours. Okay, so how exactly does vitiligo start and progress? Well, let me tell you, it really depends on the person. But generally speaking, it usually starts with a few small white patches that are first noticed on the uh, sun exposed areas of your body that spread, it starts spreading like gradually over the course of a few months. However, in other cases, vitiligo may develop much more gradually with the skin, you know, like gradually becoming lighter in color over a period of years. Vitiligo is not as rare as you may think, with an estimated of 0.5 to 2% of the global population affected by it on average. I will say that, um, you know, vitiligo is most common in people between the ages of 10 to 30 years old and it affects equally men and women. What else? Well, I mean, like whether you can inherit it or not is up for debate, considering that vitiligo is not, a, is not well understood yet. 
Still, some experts believe that vitiligo can be inherited as it often runs in families. So if one or both of your parents have vitiligo, you may be more likely to develop the condition in the future. And you know, here's the thing, you know, like the numbers stack up as around 30% with people, 30% um, of people with uh, the condition have someone in the family with the same condition. But to be honest, you know, when it comes to understanding what causes vitiligo, and uh, what causes, you know, like to develop it in the first place, it is pretty much a mystery. However, however, there are a couple of different theories. The number one, or I should say like the most popular theory is that vitiligo could be an uh, autoimmune disorder with your immune system developing antibodies that destroy your melanocytes. This theory, theory is supported by the fact that people with uh, vitiligo often have other autoimmune disorders like what? Like diabetes, thyroid disease, alopecia, uh, areata and Addison's disease. On the flip side, those with autoimmune disease are more at risk of developing um, vitiligo. Another theory is that vitiligo could be caused by a deficiency in an important enzyme called copper zinc super oxidized Anyway, I hope did you get that. Anyway, this enzyme is responsible for protecting your body from oxidative stress and the deficiency has been linked to people with uh, vitiligo. Honestly, or perhaps vitiligo is caused also by like a combination of genetic and environmental factors. This theory is supported by the fact that vitiligo often runs, as I said, in families at least, um, you know, like 30% of the time, but it also often, it's also often believed that um, vitiligo can be triggered by emotional stress, physical trauma, you know, like we don't really know. Um, the last one, the last theory is the self-destruction theory of vitiligo and this theory suggests that a defect in a melanocyte, melanocyte, yeah, will cause them to destroy themselves. Listen, we may not know a lot about the causes of this disorder, but we do know, thankfully, that it's not um, fatal and it's not contagious, so it's okay. So if you have it or if you know someone who does, um, don't worry about too much, okay? I don't, I'm not saying that it's easy to deal with it because it can be a quite distressing um, sickness, but it's not fatal, okay? And I'm saying this because we also know that uh, vitiligo can lead to a loss of self-confidence and feelings of isolation, uh, not to mention, you know, like anxiety and depression, and depression okay? Um, while the exact cause of vitiligo is still unknown, it probably won't come as a shock to you. Um, there is no, no cure, I mean, right now there is no cure, but I believe that in the next 10 years we are going to have a cure for vitiligo. vitiligo. I mean, like, I've just been reading a lot about it and, yeah, but anyway, you know, like, I'm not a doctor, so who knows, but I'm very, very positive. <laughs> Okay, and the silver lining is that there are a number of different medical treatments available for you. And the goal of each one is to create a more uniform skin tone by restoring color, you know, like repigmentation or eliminating the remaining color known as the pigmentation. Okay, the most common and effective treatment is light therapy, which involves exposing the skin to an ultraviolet light on a regular basis. This can help stop the progression of your vitiligo and may even lead to some, um, you know, like repigmentation of the skin by stimulating the production of melanocytes. There are a number of different light therapy options available for you, including um, narrow band ultraviolet B therapy, which is the most commonly used form of light therapy for vitiligo. This involves exposing the skin to UVB light like three times a week for a period of, um, you know, like six to 12 months. Other light therapy options include PUVA therapy, which involves taking, um, you know, like photosensitizing medication 
before you are exposed to UVA light. Since it is delivered to small targeted areas, it's better for those of you with, you know, like small patches of vitiligo. Finally, there is the eczema laser therapy, which uses a targeted, um, you know, beam of UVB light that is going to uh, stimulate uh, repigmentation. Another common treatment for vitiligo is surgical, with two different types of surgery available for you. Uh, skin, um, oh my goodness, skin grafting and transplantation. Although slightly different, both procedures involve taking, you know, like healthy skin from another area of the body and moving it, you know, like putting it into um, the affected area. We have also micropigmentation, also is known as medical tattooing, right? Like this is the type of treatment that can be used to camouflage vitiligo patches. The process basically involves like putting, you know, like tiny amounts of pigment into the dermis, which is the layer of the, um, the skin below the epidermis. Okay, now let's talk about repigmentation therapy. And this includes the use of corticosteroids that work by suppressing the immune system. In turn, this can help stop the progression of your vitiligo and may even lead to some repigmentation of your skin. What else? Well, there is topical vitamin D analogs that are another type of medication that can be used to treat vitiligo. They work by stimulating the production of all um, those all important uh, melanocytes. Now, let me tell you, from a mental health standpoint, counseling can be very effective if you suffer from vitiligo. You know, like it can help you cope with the emotional impact of the condition. Counselors, believe me, can provide support and guidance and they can help you develop, um, you know, like positive coping strategies. If you, need, if you need mental health, if you need a counselor, find one, okay? Okay, and finally, I want to touch on a brand new, one-of-a-kind treatment that was just approved by the FDA in the summer of 2022. Um, Obselasura, I don't know how you pronounce it, is a new innovative repigmentation treatment for vitiligo that can be done at home and it's just a cream that is applied on your skin and it works by inhibiting the production of melanocytes, helping you, you know, like stop the progression of vitiligo and possibly like leading to a uh, repigmentation of your skin. I mean like, it's, it's Awesome, really. It does this by calming your overactive immune system and eventually helping you grow new healthy skin cells and returning the pigment to the area, okay? And the fact that it can be done at home is revolutionary. Yes, believe me, it's a massive milestone. There are a couple of mixed emotions right now because the treatment is only available for, for those with um, non-segmental vitiligo and there are some people who, who are concerned about you know, the possibility of unknown side effects long term, uh, especially if you have you know, like other health issues or if you are taking certain medications just because it's a brand new medication, right? Like we don't know yet what's going to happen, but I mean like this is such a great news okay what else this treatment requires your commitment because it's quite uh it's quite slow and maybe you know it will take you around three months of you know like taking the treatment at home to see some improvements but either way you know like the new wave of at home vitiligo treatments like light therapy and topical creams could be a massive Seriously, a massive game changer, especially as they become more accessible and more affordable. I honestly think that this is so exciting. Like seriously, there is a lot of, um, you know, things moving forward. In any case, if you suffer from vitiligo, seek help if you need it. And remember that you are gorgeous, beautiful, just as you are. Bye for now.